Next up in this Laravel in a nutshell series, I want to take a look at working with databases within Laravel. And specifically what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a database with a couple tables to manage our product data, which up until this point, we've just been dealing with a hard-coded array of data. When it comes to working with databases in Laravel, they support a handful of different database types. The one I'm going to be demonstrating is MySQL. If you're on Windows and working with Laragon, which is the server software I had you get set up with in part one of this series, you should already have a MySQL database service up and running. Uh, just to show that, let me quickly switch over to my Windows install. And here you can see I've got Laragon running. And in addition to my Apache web server, I can also confirm that MySQL is running. So Windows users, you can go ahead and skip to the timecode I have listed on the screen. Where we're gonna show you how to configure your application to interact with this database. But Mac users, you're gonna wanna hang around because we have a little bit of setup to do to get a database system up and running. Uh, in part one of this series, the server platform I got you set up with is running via Herd. And unfortunately, Herd does not come with a database system like Laragon does, uh, but that's okay. We can get it set up easily using a separate program called DB Engine. You can get this at dbengine.com. Uh, go ahead and download it and install it. And then once you've got it installed, I'll open it on my end to show you what the interface looks like. Uh, the first thing you wanna do with it running is you wanna click this little plus icon, and this will give you the option to create a new database server. For the service type, choose MySQL give it a name, I'll just call it MySQL. And then you can leave all the other settings as the default, click create, and then click start to uh, start that service up. And what you're looking for is this little green dot indicating that that service is running. So now at this point, whether you're on a Mac or Windows, you should be set up with a MySQL database service. So now we're gonna turn our attention back to our application and we need to configure it so that it can interact with this database system. The way we're gonna do this is locating this .env file in the root of our application. And within this file, we want to focus on the settings that begin with db underscore. The first setting is indicating the connection type we're using. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Laravel supports uh, several different database types. Uh, we are using MySQL, so we're gonna leave that as the default. For the database host, we are connecting to a database system that's running uh, locally on our machines, and the default IP address for that is 127001. So we'll again leave that as the default. We're also going to leave a uh, port as the default of 3306. This is a very uh, common port to run MySQL on. Uh, for the database, this is where we're going to input our database name. And by default, it's set to just Laravel. I recommend changing that and naming it after your application. So in all of these examples, I've just been calling my application demo. So I'll use that same name here. Uh, in terms of the username and password for connecting to this database server, we're going to leave the default uh, username of root and then passwords just empty. These values are the default credentials that are used by both uh, DB Engine and Laragon's instances of MySQL. Uh, and keep in mind, everything we're doing is in a local development context. So obviously an empty password is not very secure, uh, but it's not a concern when we're working locally when we were to eventually deploy this application to a production environment, we would obviously want to have a more secure password there, but it's not a concern in this particular context. Uh, so long story short, you can really leave everything as the default. You just want to give it a, a database name that's specific to your application. Now with that change in place, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run our migration system within Laravel. And the migration system in Laravel allows us to programmatically create tables in our database. Uh, we're gonna be creating some migrations in a moment, but before we even do that, I just wanna run the default migrations that come with Laravel, just so we can get a sense of how the system works and also to get our database initially set up. So long story short, bring up your command line program, make sure you're in your directory for the application you're working in and run the command php artisan migrate. And you'll recall that Artisan is just that built-in command line utility that comes with Laravel applications. We previously used it when we generated a new controller, and now we're just using it to invoke our migration system. So I'm gonna run that. Uh, it's gonna detect that the database demo does not yet exist on this MySQL connection. Would we like to create it? I'll use the left arrow to highlight yes and hit enter. And I received confirmation that the migrations ran without any issue. 
uh, just to demonstrate that the settings I showed in the environment file would also work on Windows and Laragon. Let me switch over to my Windows install quickly. You can see I have the same settings here. I'm gonna go uh, bring up my command line program, change into my demo application, and run a PHP Artisan Migrate here. It looks like in Windows, rather than being able to select yes or no, I just have to type it out. And then we see a similar confirmation to what we saw on Mac. So now switching back to my Mac, let's proceed forward. And I wanna talk more specifically about what just happened when we ran this migrate command. Well, obviously, as we saw, it did the initial creation of our database, but it also ran these migration files to set up some default tables that every Laravel application comes with. Uh, and where we'll see the underlying code for these migration files is within our database directory. There's a migration subdirectory, and we should see four files there that uh, correspond to the migration output that we saw here. So for example, the first one was uh, the task of creating a users table, and the corresponding file for that is this create users table file. Uh, it is prefixed with a uh, timestamp, which is something you'll see with all of your migration files. The purpose there is to make sure your migrations are always run in the same order. Uh, and the reason it's indicated as 2014 and 2019 uh, is just those were the years that these default migrations were added to the Laravel system. All right, now looking at a migration file, you're always going to see two methods, an up method and a down method. In the up method, you're going to see code that is going to be somehow altering uh, or creating a table within your database. And then the down method is going to always undo whatever was done in the up method. And the idea with this up and down is migrations, it's essentially like version control for your database. So by programmatically uh, describing these changes, we have the ability to run the migration system forward and also backwards. Right? If we wanted to roll back the creation of a database table, which can occasionally come in handy, uh, that's why we have the down method. But when it comes to generating our tables or regenerating our tables, that's why we have the up methods. Uh, now the code to create a new table is going to be using the schema class and it's going to follow the pattern we see here where it's going to specify the name of the table and then within uh, this function it's going to define the different uh, fields or columns of the table. So skimming through this default users table we can see it starts with a field called ID. Uh, this is going to act as a unique identifier for each row in this table. Following that we're creating a field that's going to expect a data type of string we're calling that field name. So this is just gonna be the user's name. Uh, we also have an email field that's gonna accept a string. Uh, this has a modifier on it, uh, indicating that any data entered into this field should be unique. In other words, there shouldn't be two rows within our user's table that has the same email. Following that, the field type we see is a timestamp field. Uh, we're gonna call this one email verified at. Uh, and this has a modifier nullable, indicating that we could have rows in this table that doesn't have a value for this field, and it wouldn't throw any error. Whereas uh, things like our name and our email, uh, because it doesn't have that nullable modifier, uh, they are going to be required for every row in this table. Now we have a few more fields that are also added to this table. I'm not going to go into the specifics of these. I want to focus right now on the big picture with this idea that within your schema create, you're just specifying the different fields of your table. You're indicating the data type expected for those fields, the name of the fields, and also certain modifiers that uh, influence the behavior of those fields. Uh, now, these tables that come with Laravel by default, uh, they're pre-set up uh, to support things like a user system that you can utilize within Laravel. Um, and you could delete them. If you don't plan on having a user system, you don't necessarily need these tables. But generally speaking, most applications go on to have a user system. So I'll, I suggest keeping them around. And then as you get to working with the user system, you can come back and modify them as needed. Uh, but I want to shift our attention to uh, tables that are unique to the application we're building. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I want to add a categories table and a products table. And the way I'm going to do that is by creating a new migration. And to create a new migration, I'm going to go back to command line. And once again, we're going to use artisan. We're going to say PHP artisan make migration. And then the name of the migration, starting with our categories table, I'm going to say create categories table. And I'll run that and I get confirmation that that migration was completed. And then if I go back to my migrations directory, you can see I have a new file at the end, uh, which is prefixed with the timestamp of when I just ran that command. 
And then within the migration file, you could see that up and down method was set up for me. It even set up the schema create within the up method. Uh, and it even inferred the name of the table based on the name of the migration. So if you follow that pattern of create table name table, uh, it will set up your file with the appropriate table name and the appropriate uh, code to kick things off for that. The other thing it set me up with uh, in terms of describing the table, it starts things off with this ID method, which just like in our users table, this is going to set us up with a ID field that's going to be used to track a unique identifier for each row in this table. The timestamps method is going to set up two fields. It's going to create a created at field and an updated at field. Uh, and these are going to store timestamps indicating when rows in this table were created, as well as when they were updated. And it's not required that you track that in your tables, but sometimes that meta information can be useful. So I'm going to leave that in this example. All right, so those are like your standard fields you start off with. Uh, building on it, the fields I need specific to this table. Uh, for each of my categories, I want to store the name of the category. So I'm going to invoke a string method to set up a uh, field type in this table that will expect string data. And I'll just call it name, indicating the name of the category. Uh, and in terms of the categories, that's really all I need. I just need the name of the category and some ID to go with it. So we should be all set with this migration. Let's create another migration now for our products table. So once again, going back to command line, we're going to do PHP artisan make migration. And this time it's going to be create products table. And then we'll open up the resulting file and we'll go ahead and define the fields we need in this table. I'm going to create a string type field that's going to store the product name. And then I want some way to connect my products to my categories. And the way I'm going to do that is by creating a special field that's a foreign key field. And it's called a foreign key because it's going to maintain a relationship to some outside or some foreign table. And in this case, it's going to be our categories table. Now, let me go ahead and type out the code for how we're going to create this foreign key. And let's break down what's going on here. So this first line is actually creating the field itself. The field name is going to be category ID. And the data type is going to be a big integer, which is just a MySQL data type. And the reason we set it to be a big integer is because when the ID field was created in the categories table using this ID method, these ID fields always default to that big int data type. So we want to make sure we're uh, matching that here. We're also going to indicate that it's unsigned, which means that this is always going to be a positive number. And this is just a requirement for whenever you're setting up your foreign keys. All right, so that creates the field. The next line is what's going to identify this as a foreign key within the uh, structure of the table. The way we do that is with this foreign method. We're going to specify the name of the field that we're making a foreign key. And then we're going to say what it references. So in this case, the field category ID is going to reference the ID field in our categories table. Now this last step of making that field a foreign key uh, what this is going to be doing is putting meta information within our MySQL table, making it aware of the relationship between our products table and the categories table. Uh, and that's going to help with uh, some of the queries we're going to run against this data. It's going to optimize some of those queries. So uh, it's very useful to not just define the foreign key field, but also basically make MySQL aware of this relationship between these two tables. Now with that, we should be set up for the different fields that we need. I do want to take a moment, I'm going to bring the documentation up on the screen and show you that there's lots of different methods available when it comes to structuring your tables. Uh, basically any of the MySQL data types that you might want to use, there's a method within the Laravel schema class for uh, creating those data types. So definitely reference the documentation when you're creating your own tables. Uh, but moving on with our example, I want to run our migrations again now that I've added these two migrations. So coming back to command line, I'm going to run PHP artisan migrate again. And this time you'll note that it only ran the last two migrations we had added um, because behind the scenes Laravel is keeping track of which migrations it has run. So it didn't rerun those four initial migrations uh, that we saw earlier uh, because those tables already existed. It didn't need to create them again. It's only running new migrations. And with that, our tables are created. 
And just to zoom out for a moment and appreciate this migration system, by building our tables in this way, where we actually have the code for generating the tables within our application, this is going to make it really easy to uh, run this application in different contexts. For example, let's say you have a collaborator who's going to start working on this same project and they download a copy of your code base. Because you have migrations in place, they can just run the migrations that you've set up and build the database structure they need to run your application. Uh, same thing for, let's say, when you want to deploy this application to a production environment, you're going to need to build a production database there. And if you've got migrations in place, you can quickly run the code to do that and get your tables set up perfectly. All right, and this is in contrast to skipping this entire migration system. You could have just manually gone into your MySQL system and created tables by hand, uh, but then you don't have this nice record in your code base of the tables and the structure that's expected for those tables. So highly, highly recommend a migration system whenever building applications. And uh, of course, Laravel has all the functionality we need built in to uh, do that effectively. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. We've got our database set up as well as our tables. And now building on this in the next video, we're going to take a look at what tools Laravel has to start to interact with these tables via features in our application.